What's up guys? This is Brave and I'm back with another review of Ready to Love. This is season 7, episode 6 I believe. And the episode is titled, Do You Like Me? Let's jump right into the review. So we start off with um, the guys meeting up. We have Tommy letting them know that he wants them to ask these ladies the hard questions. Really get to know them. You know what typically happens on Ready to Love. And he also lets them know that later he's going to get the entire group together because he wants to know where everybody's head is. I said, all right, cool. Let's jump into the episode. Like, let's get to the real date. So, first things first, we have a group date. It is Blake, Lyndon, Anthony, Cynthia, Susu, and Mercedes. I said, yes, finally we see Mercedes because I have not seen nobody really talking to her in a minute. So, they actually do like this um, obstacle course and it looked like it was a lot of fun. Like, they literally turned into big kids and they had water guns. Like, it was, it was actually good to see them let loose. Um, at one point there was Blake talking in his confessional and he was like, you know, we were supposed to be doing this obstacle course and everybody got off course and they weren't doing it correctly. I thought he was going to be the person to have the stick in his butt, but he was actually like letting loose. He was like, no, they brought out water guns. It was a lot of fun because you already know Blake seems very strange and very direct and in order. So the fact that he actually let loose, I was surprised. So, let's go ahead and talk about when they broke off. So, first things first. You have Mercedes and Anthony talking. And I was like, oh yeah, I think at one point when we first met everybody, they had a connection. I kind of forgot about it because we have not seen Anthony or Mercedes like that. So, they play a game and he asked her, like, just tell me something about you that you probably normally wouldn't say or whatever. And Mercedes was so upfront and honest like, I must say, I really did like her on this scene because she was honest with everybody that she talked to. So she told him, like, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure if I'm really the woman for you because I'm not as established as you are. And also, you already have a lot of things going on that I don't. Also, this man has a child. So her being a single woman who does not have any children. She does not exactly understand what it would be like to come in dating someone who has children. Like, where does she fit into that? You know what I'm saying? So that would be a new world for her. Also, he is, I want to say he's older than her. Because I feel like she was in her early 30s, and he's like 39. Um, You know, he's well into his career. So it would be an adjustment for her. And also... It's something that she would have to like learn. So she lets him know this and he's like, well, I think you're selling yourself short because he does not mind that she does not have, you know, as much as he has or the fact that she doesn't have kids. Like he's still, he's still here for it. He still likes Mercedes. Like she's like, you know, you've already had certain experiences. And when he was like, well, you know, we can also share a lot of the experiences together. I was like, well, look at Anthony. Like, I gotta be honest, I feel like Anthony may be one of my favorite guys on this season. He may be my favorite guy, because I feel like he's very genuine when he's talking to the women. Now, let's go ahead and slide on over to another date. Lyndon and Susu. I said, where'd this come from? Like, I feel like they both may have some type of island background or something like that, but that's where it ends. I do not see Susu saying it for Lyndon. I just don't see it. Like, this woman is well-established. She's an attorney. Why is she playing around with the bartender? I don't see it aligning. Now, they briefly talk about how, you know, he's taken a long time to use her phone number. And then when he finally does use her number, she's not responding. Probably because he's texting her super late at night. Because last time I checked, this man is always in the nightlife. Like he likes to commonly say. And she's like probably trying to go to sleep because she had a case in the morning. That's not going to align. Now, what was funny to me was that Lyndon actually sat up there and said, you know, we can be cool, we can get it popping, but that's where it is. I said, you got your nerve. Just say she ain't the woman for you, okay? Let's just say that. And then he also had to have the nerve to say that everything is surface with her and, you know, he doesn't really know much about her. I said, I don't know much about you. What do we know about Lyndon, y'all? Like, for real, for real. We hardly know anything about him. So I didn't know where he was going with that. So 
here we go, Lyndon, round two. He goes and talks to Mercedes, and he asks her straight up, like, do you like me? Now, she was being honest yet again, and she told him that, you know, she sees them as friends. She does not see any type of romantic connection, and he is actually surprised. He can't believe it that, you know, someone else is turning him down. I mean, baby boy is getting shut down left and right, okay? Back to back. And Mercedes had to tell him, like, listen, I see the way you are when you're with the other women, you know what I mean? Because they've been in group settings before, and it's not the same with them. I mean, with, you know, between him and her. So let's go ahead, separate ways, but they can be friends. I said, all right, at least she was honest because she could have easily been like, yeah, sure, we could try to make this work, knowing she does not have any interest in him like that. Now, let's slide on over to Blake and Susu. They have a conversation. Now, one thing I noticed is that he was saying how he didn't want to be anything less than transparent with her. And here's her response. Oh my gosh, like you're using all these big words. Girl, you're an attorney. What are you talking about? I hate when women try to dumb themselves down just to like flirt with a guy. That is so weird to me. Like then she goes to sit on his lap and they kiss. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and make this be a thing. I know a lot of people, they hate when people don't date everybody, but that was the whole purpose of this show. I think that we have gotten so far from the premise of ready to love. We forgot what we should be doing at this point. We're in episode six. I don't mind Blake and Susu being together and choosing each other at this point, because if we can recall, if you go back to season two, three, four, People were already making their selections of who they wanted to move forward with. And then we would go ahead and meet people's families and their friends and all of that. That used to make sense to me. Like, I don't know when we got to the point of, oh, everybody needs to date everybody. And then we'll just see who we're going to choose on the last day. No, everybody wants to be in a love triangle now. I'm so over it. I know y'all hated it when it was, who was that? Camille and Cornelius, Camilla and Cornelius. I can't remember their names. Y'all hated them. I feel like Blake and Susu is going to be the next couple that y'all hate like that. But I don't mind it. Let them go ahead and choose each other. Um, let's go ahead and move along. So, that date was over. Oh, I wanted to say, um, Susu actually looked really nice with the yellow in her confessional. That was a really good look on her. Um, next, you guys, we had a date. And it was with Jeffrey and Blue. So in her confessional, she says that, you know, the last date that she had was her best date. And that was the group date with, um, you know, him, Blake, what was her name? Marcia. Yeah, Marcia was there too. And I'm just like, that was your best date so far? It wasn't you riding the bull? It wasn't your date with um, Mark Anthony? No, that wasn't it? Okay, girl. So... She goes on to talk about how she wants him to be more aggressive. She wants Blue to really pursue her. But here's my thing. I feel like Blue is not that type of guy, if we be it for real, for real. I don't think that Blue is the guy who's going to be extremely aggressive. And like, if you're over there talking to another guy, he about to be all big and bad and be like, oh, I'm going ahead and take her hand and I need to talk to her right now. I don't see Blue being that guy. He's very relaxed. He's very chill. Like, he just seemed very laid back. And on top of that, girl, you just got on his radar. So I don't understand why you want him to be so aggressive. I feel like we heard the word aggressive be used so many times. Like, if you took a shot every time you heard the word aggressive, you probably would have took about 10 shots. I promise you. Because everybody used the word how they need people to be aggressive. So... Um, on this date though they talk about their children we also learn that Jeffrey's child had a meltdown because he wanted some toast and oatmeal but then we also learn more about Blue and his kid so we actually learn that his son he travels more than Blue does and I'm just like oh well that's pretty interesting um, here's the thing so Jeffrey she actually goes on to tell Blue you know she wants to know how she would fit into his lifestyle and how, you know, he's never pressured her. And I'm like, pressured you to do what? Pressure you to, like, I'm so confused. Like, sometimes the language that the people use on this show, I'm just like, 
are you saying this because it sounds good? Because what would he be pressuring you to do? Just curious. But nonetheless, she did tell him that she wants him to be more aggressive. So what does he do? He gets up from his seat. That was from sitting across from her to sitting right next to her. They hold hands and watch some ducks. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll be honest. I don't see it for Blue and Jeffrey. Um, Yeah, I don't think that's going to match up. But we'll see who makes it to the end. All right. So now we have a date between Lyndon and Morgan. Now, this man is in his hoochie daddy shorts. And I can't lie. The way she was talking to him... I was like, yeah, it seems like you're just using him to try to make Tony jealous. So Morgan is talking to him about how she couldn't trust the person she was in her longest relationship uh, with. So she didn't love that person. And as we know, she has said that she has never been in love before. Now, Lyndon, he chimes in and he says that, you know, trust has been a problem for him as well because he's in the nightlife. He's always out. He's always networking. And according to Morgan, he needs to be with a very strong woman that can handle that. And I'm like, so are you trying to be that girl? Like, it's so weird to read Morgan because I'm like, Tony and Lyndon have total different lifestyles. So depending on which guy you choose, girl, you gonna be living a total different way. Because the way you are with Lyndon is not the same that you're going to be with Tony. So I think you need to like prepare yourself for what you really try to get into. So she says that, you know, she can be transparent with Lyndon. And I'm just like, girl, if you like it, go ahead. Because I don't see it. I don't see it for Morgan and Lyndon. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't see it for them. Let's go ahead and move on because we actually see Tony. He is on a date with Marcia. So... Um, out of all the guys that she's talked to, she said that she's talked to Tony the most. And, you know, he says that there is Marcia and Morgan for him. And Marcia, she kind of got upset that, she, that he told her that he has two options that he's interested in. And I'm just like, well, at least he being honest with you. At least he not saying, no, nah, you number one, you number one. But really, he keeping Morgan in his back pocket while you don't know. Like, get a man something. At least he being honest and up front. So, he actually told Marcia that there was a difference between her and Morgan, and that was that Morgan is more aggressive when it comes to wanting Tony, because she definitely lets it be known, versus Marcia, who's a bit more laid back. So, Marcia did tell him, like, no, I had to make sure you were a safe place. I had to make sure that, you know, I felt comfortable enough with you for me to really want to intentionally pursue you. So, moving forward, I feel like we would definitely see more of Marcia putting in effort to show Tony that she wants, you know, wants to be with him. So we shall see what happens there. Like, I can honestly say I actually do like Marcia and Tony. Like, they don't bother me. I think they would actually work out quite well, but we'll see what happens. Now, let's slide on over to Mark Anthony because Baby Boy has set up a date. He has brought the food and he has invited a few guests. So we have Tony coming as well as Jonique and Jeffrey. So I was like, okay, so you invited Jonique for Tony and Jeffrey for yourself because I already know you are not trying to get to know Jonique. I already know it. So Jonique is there and she says that, you know, it usually takes her some time to get to know people. But with this type of process, things are moving very fast. And... Jeffrey, she says that she's an overthinker and how she didn't want a man with kids, even though she was a single mother. Now, I found that to be a very interesting statement that when she said that, because it's like, girl, you already got kids. So how are you going to judge a man if he got some kids? But nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump on over to when they asked Jonique, what was she looking for in a guy? And baby girl was so honest and so real. She's like, she wants somebody that's solid. She wants a guy who is going to put her and her family first. You know what I mean? He got to have a relationship with God. Like, Jonique, I feel like that girl has her head on straight for sure. Um, Yeah, she may like to go have a, out, go have a good time. But like, 
I'm sorry. I really do like her. And I'm really upset that like more guys are not trying to get with her. <laughs> so, um, Tony was taking so much interest in her. Like she was talking the talk that he liked. And that had me thinking that, you know what? It might get a little bit more interesting around here because Tony was only interested in Morgan and Marcia. But now we have Jonique. She might be creeping up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see them go out on a one-on-one date. So hopefully we will see that next episode. Now, one thing that we can definitely take note of is that there will not be a Jonique and Mark Anthony ever because... After that date, like, she had already known that there was nothing there. There was no chemistry, no nothing. And I can absolutely agree with her. There was nothing with Mark Anthony. Like I said, I feel like Mark Anthony kind of judged her just off the first time meeting her. Like, I feel like he looked at her as like, oh, she's just some, like, ghetto chick. Nah, I ain't trying to mess with that. Like, I promise you, that's the energy that he gives. So, let's go ahead and move along. And it's crazy because he want to be with Jeffrey, but she got three kids and he don't have none. And he don't even want to date a woman with children. That Now, that's what he's, you know what, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, let's go ahead and talk about when everybody decides to meet up. Everybody meets up, they're taking shots. We actually uh, see Lyndon and Morgan having a conversation or whatever. And she was like, yeah, I'm already on my second margarita. I said, oh, this is about to get real messy then. If all y'all drinking, all y'all got some liquor in y'all system, we're going to see how this group meeting goes because some of y'all may be talking reckless. We'll see. So I cracked up in the confessional part when Tony was like, Morgan is over there buttering Lyndon up when he know he don't have no chance. (laughs) And I'm just like, Tony really does look at Lyndon as if Lyndon is a child because That's the vibe I get. I get like little brother, little cousin vibe from Lyndon. So honestly, when it comes to Morgan, it's like either you're going to be with a grown man like Tony or you're going to be dealing with like a little boy and that's Lyndon. Sorry, not sorry. So Tommy finally shows up, right? And, um, oh, before I even talk about that, Y'all, why do we have Susu and Anthony have a conversation and it was literally no connection? And I mean no connection. And I'm just like, girl, just stick with Blake, okay? Y'all can ride off into the sunset together and we can be done. I don't know why, again, every person on this show thinks they need to date everybody. No, you don't. Start, Start selecting who you like and let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so Tommy finally get there, right? So he gonna tell us. Well, I guess he told them that Andre gave him a call talking about some, oh, I'm COVID free now. I want to come back. Uh-uh, Negro. When you quit the show, you should go ahead and leave. Ain't no way you should be able to come back to the show because you ain't coughing no more. No, you made the conscious decision to leave. So you should go ahead and stay out. Like, I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't understand why we brought Andre back. Okay, so like I said, everybody's okay. Andre, come back. Baby boy comes strolling in. He got the tendril, the bun, and the back of a mohawk. I said, you know, this is just a lie. I didn't miss it. I did not miss him in that tacky hairstyle. So, Tommy says that we are halfway through the process. And two singles need to leave tonight. I said, we are halfway through the process. And it's too many people still here. Like... (laughs) I know we only on episode six, but am I crazy? Am I crazy? I feel like it is way too many people that is still here in the process. Nonetheless, we got to talk about the conversations had. Okay. Andre, go first. The whole point is that you go ahead. You are, it's an open forum. You can say whatever you want about, you know, who you're feeling, who you're not feeling. Where is everybody's head at, Right. Andre decides he's going to go first. I said, okay, cool, whatever. And I'm thinking that he's going to be like, you know, even though I left the competition, I still want to move forward with Cynthia. I still want to see if Jeffrey is open to dating me. That's where I thought we were going. Oh, no. He's talking about how, you know, when I left the competition, I still kept in contact with, you know, some of my connections. However, 
um, Mercedes, she didn't reach out to me. And I'm just like, Negro, you left the competition. Why would she still be reaching out to you? You are no longer a contender, baby. If she's if she has other connections, why would she sit up here and still communicate with you when you said you were leaving the show? Make that make sense. Like, how dare you? And then you try to call her out in front of everybody. I'm like, well, Tommy, that right there is when you should have been like, no, hold on, bruh. You left the show. So how are you expecting for this woman to still be blowing your phone up? Make that make sense. So she like, she said something, I think it was along the lines of like, you know, that was the expectation that you had for me. Then yeah, I totally missed the mark. And I'm just like, what is happening here? Because then we had a clip of Tommy. I don't know if this was misplaced or what. Because Tommy going to say, you have to be able to take constructive criticism. I said, what that got to do with what we just watched? (laughs) Constructive criticism. The man left the show. What are we talking about here? Nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on. Because I think they're probably going to have a conversation next week. Now, it's Marcia's turn. Now, she says that, you know, when it comes to Anthony, she's connected with him outside of the process. I'm going to assume that she's saying, like, phone calls and text messages. But um, when they're when they're uh, in the process, they don't connect. I said, oh, so when they're filming. Like, I don't know. That's the frustrating part about this show is that there's so much outside stuff that happens that we're not privy to as the viewers. So we be kind of lost in the sauce because I've never even seen Anthony look this woman's way. All right, so now that Marcia's turn is over, whose turn was it? I think it was Jeffrey. Yeah, it was Jeffrey's turn. And then she talks about not connecting with Anthony. And I'm just like, okay, I'm confused. I thought the whole point was for everybody to voice, you know, what how they're feeling with the connections that they have already made. Like, I honestly feel like it is a waste of time when the contestants on this show, they want to sit up there and be like, oh, well, I didn't make a connection with so-and-so. It's probably because they weren't interested in you. The point of this show was not to date every cast member. If a guy is not interested in you, but he's interested in two, three other women, let that man rock over there with them two, three other women. Every man does not have to date you on this show. And I think that is one thing that is frustrating to me with um, Ready to Love. Everybody has it in their mind that everybody wants me. Everybody want to be with me. No, they don't. People are narrowing down who they actually want to talk to. That's why, like I said, I respected Mercedes at the top of this uh, review. Baby girl shut it down with Lyndon. Like, no, we only friends, baby. I'm not about to play this game with you and be like, yeah, let's go out. Let's go on dates. I'm not about to waste my time. Okay, Jeffrey, why are we even talking about Anthony? If that man ain't never spoke to you, then what are we here to talk about? Talk about how you no longer want to move forward with Blake. Talk about what happened with that. Let's talk about how I need to really have a conversation with Mark Anthony and for him to let me know if he doesn't want to be with a woman with children because that's what I'm hearing when I'm in the women's lounge. That's the questions that you should be asking. Not worried about what Anthony got going on. You need to be worried about what Mark Anthony got going on. You feel me? So, next thing we have... um. Cynthia she talks about how you know she has a great connection with Anthony and their connection is really strong and when it comes to Mark Anthony though she feels like he's young and he doesn't know if he's ready for love and Jody she said there's no spark with Mark Anthony um again I don't know that Tommy Tommy must have told them something that we didn't hear he must have said all right when we say, say talk about one person we go do a round table about each person. Like, if I say Mark Anthony, now everybody tell me how you feel about Mark Anthony. Uh, we gonna talk about Anthony? Tell me how you feel about Anthony. Like, it's very strange here. That's This is not what I thought it was gonna be. So, Susu, she says that she's not feeling Mark Anthony as well because she feels like he's still getting to, you know, know himself because he's so young or whatever. And Mark Anthony, he actually had a rebuttal 
he said that, you know, there's just no compatibility there. And I said, I'm glad that you finally said something. Somebody should have said something. I think that all these people who are coming after people because they don't have a connection with them is weird. Like, if he ain't the man for you, there's no need to comment on it at all. Unless you guys had, like, an actual disagreement somewhere and things got messy. Like how the Jeffrey and Blake thing uh, happened. If the man just ain't for you, just move along. We ain't got to talk about it. So now we move on to Susu. Tony says that, you know, he didn't even know why she was there. He clearly was not feeling her. Then we had um, Andre. He said that she was never on the top of his list. He thinks that she's arrogant. And I'm just like, okay. I don't understand why the people who are not interested in people are having commentary. Tony, you can go ahead and talk about how you wish that, you know, certain people who you know are interested in him would be more open. You know what I'm saying? I wish that I could get to know more Jonique more. Like, I don't understand why we're talking about people who are not relevant to your dating experience. Nonetheless, um, we have Blake. Blake, I feel like he actually understood the assignment. He talks about Sue Ann, how they have a connection, all this stuff. Um, He's honest about Jonique because he has been on a date with Jonique. He says, you know, she wants children. Um, I would never be able to provide that for her. And um, in her confessional, Jonique was like, you know, Blake is not a nice person like that. Like, he's not pleasant to talk to. I said, oh, girl, we saw that date. We know, we absolutely know that Blake is not it, okay? We gonna leave him a susu girl, because I know you can find somebody better. All right, now let's slide on over to, who was talking next? I want to say it was Morgan. Oh, yes, Morgan. Morgan, she talks about how Blake and her didn't get off to a good start. And I'm just like, yeah, because he told you he didn't want children. He was upfront. He was honest. Blake came in here trying to figure out who was actually for him. I don't think that, as strange as Blake is, I don't think that Blake came into this show to waste his time or other people's times. He already knew he had three kids and he did not want to have any more children. So what he was not going to do was waste his time dating a woman who wanted kids. You're already marked off the list. We're done. Moving forward, I'm going to focus on a woman who doesn't want children anymore. Like, who doesn't want to have more children. You know what I'm saying? So, then, this is the part that got me, though. Because she's like, you know, and she always had to consider what Jeffrey had to say. And I'm like, Morgan, so instead of getting to know this man yourself, you decide to piggyback off of Jeffrey's emotions? That's weird. That's super weird. So Blake chimes in, says that he never said that he chose Jeffrey and that they are not compatible. Um, He hopes that she finds what she's looking for. Jeffrey, on the other hand, says that he's controlling and he's not authentic. Um, She even brings up Sue Ann and how she wants to insert herself in Jeffrey's connections. And it's just so weird because I'm just like, listen. Jeffrey knows how to use her words because using words like controlling, saying that someone's not authentic, yeah, those things are definitely branding Blake as a certain type of man. Blake is definitely strange. He's weird. He is definitely not the type of man that I would ever be interested in. But the way she kind of came off to me, I don't know. It's like you must still have some type of heat for this man. Because why are we not letting it go? Like, the fact that he was just like, you know, we are compatible. I hope she finds what she's looking for. That sounds like he's just trying to move on. While you're still trying to be, like, negative about the whole situation. And honestly, it's kind of funny that she talks about Sue Ann. And I'm just like, well, you and Susu aren't even into the same type of man. If we being for real, for real, they are not interested in any of the same men that I can think of at this point. Because I think Su- Susu only interested in Blake. And Jeffrey has like, you know, multiple contenders. But nonetheless, next thing you know, we have Jeffrey and Blake going back and forth. Forth and back. 
because Blake is saying that he didn't know that there was an issue with Jeffrey until he heard about what was said in the lounge to him. And then you have Susu. Um, she wants Jeffrey to stop talking about her. And I think Blake said that as well. Um, then we have Susu and Jeffrey going back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, Susu is telling Jeffrey, don't talk to me. Don't mention my name. I'm like, this is just a lot. I feel like it's a lot. And a lot of this is so unnecessary. But nonetheless, that is where the episode ended. Let me know what y'all thought about it. Do y'all believe Jeffrey? Do y'all believe Blake? At this point, who do y'all actually see it for? Like, who do y'all think is actually going to make it to the end? Because I'm not really seeing it for any of these people. But we shall see. Um, Yeah, next week looks really interesting. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.